I was just hanging out with Justin and Rebecca and this guy just showed up out of nowhere. This is Ben from the Holler Homestead. Ben is the person who built this for Justin and this this is something I wanted to recreate in the homestead for my sheep but had some difficulties with it last year trying to make a makeshift version of it. Didn't work out so well so I'm here uh, to pick Ben's brain now and he's going to share the insight and the, the build like how to recreate this for us. The story is Justin had a concept he got a picture from Greg Judy right and then he handed you a picture uh, I right? had just a picture from you know like 10 feet away and he's like could you build this I was like yeah I probably could and so we started talking about it and it's pretty basic the way it's built you you want some sort of frame to stiffen up a couple of these uh, panels and then you need to connect the panels together and form a square and then there's you know some cross pieces to stiffen it up. Um, so the concept was pretty straightforward, it was pretty simple. So as far as materials go, we have the cattle panels, we have the steel, and we'll get you to talk more in detail about the steel, the, and, uh, and then we have the, the, wheels. the wheels. What is that it for materials basically? Pretty much, there's a few other, you know, odds and ends, you know, latches and whatever else. The material's pretty cheap, I used way thinner material than I should have um, because we were worried about weight. Um, all this is one by one square tubing and it's, I believe it's a 16th inch wall. So it's some pretty light stuff. Uh, it'll burn through if you weld it too hot. Uh, but like I said, it was weight that we were concerned with. Um, I did use beefier stuff. I used inch and a half square tubing for wheel mounts because those have to be a little bit heavier. Um, and then the casters are just, they're just Harbor Freight casters. Nothing special, nothing expensive. You said this is a little on the thin side. Yeah. If you were to rebuild this today, what steel gauge would you be using? I would probably, if not double the thickness, go up to eighth inch. Um, there's some thinner stuff. I think it's uh, 093 or something like that. Um, it's kind of in between eighth inch and a sixteenth. Various places are starting to buckle and give. Um, I suppose a way you could fight that, you could run a cross member across the middle, but then if you get in there, you have to get in there for whatever reason, you're gonna bump your head or run into it. Um, that, but if you use the, that thicker gauge. If you use thicker, it'll help. Yeah. Uh, but really, the shape of this, you know, there's a lot of stress on the corners. Um, when you pull it in the middle, that's a lot of stress on those pieces. Um, thicker material would help, but then your weight goes up. Would you keep this concept, the, the square, or would you change it in any way other than the steel gauge? Well, I'm going to make one for myself, and I'm pretty much going to do the same thing. I'm okay. Gonna, I'm going to do a little bit smaller. Um, we were actually talking earlier, could, yeah. you, could you do a 12 by 12 instead of a 16? Yeah, I think so. Um, I'm probably going to do like a 10 by 10, um, just because when you buy metal, usually it comes in 20 foot sticks. And so oh, right. if you get 20 foot sticks, cut them in half, there's right. your 10 by 10. That makes more sense. Um, and then you know, you're only lopping off a little bit of cattle panel or whatever you're using. It was probably about two weeks ago, I was editing the vlog you were in with Justin. You came out and welded the... These right here? Yeah, let me, let's me let see what you did there. There's really no support uh, side to side on these. And so if you hit like a divot or a rock or something, it's all that stress just right here on where the welds are. And what had happened was the welds had actually ripped out of the metal. And so there was big old holes right here that I had to fill. And that was just something that should have been done. Um, gussets, you know, you need supports. Um, and when I built it, it was just, we overlooked it. We hadn't talked about it. This is all inch and a half square tubing and it's an eighth inch wall. And then everything else was one inch by one inch square tubing with a 16th inch wall. I think I probably only used about 15 feet of the bigger stuff. And then uh, I used a good amount. I'd, I'd have to go back and measure. Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head how much I used, but it was a lot of one by one. When we put this together, I want to say all of the material, uh, mm, I think casters included, uh, I think we spent around $800. Uh, don't quote me on that. That's just off the top of my head. There might have been more. Um, and that wasn't counting the cattle panels because uh, Justin had already had the panels. Right. So that was just the tubing 
uh, welding supplies, casters, you know, the, the odd hook and loop that goes here and there. It took me seven or eight hours to weld it. Just, you know, putting it all up. I did it without help. I did it up here in Justin's driveway. Um, so it's, if you hire a welder, it's gonna go up. But that was, that was about what I had in it. All right, Ben, so if you had to do it over again, what would you do differently? Probably the wheel mounts. Um, if it wasn't a one day build, cause that was what it was like, we did a one day build. Uh, I would take a lot more time. I would have made, I probably would eliminate the inch and a half tubing and I would do everything 100% out of the one by one. And I would probably make boltable mounts that are, they're welded. And then if you get a flat tire or you bust a caster or something, all you have to do is unbolt it and change out the caster. Uh, just little things like that. Because having to come back and fix it lets me know it's not working. So just little stuff like that. Ben, awesome man for sharing all that uh, insight on that. I've, I've gotten questions about it and I've tried to recreate it on my property and it hasn't happened. So this is really gonna go a long way in getting me there this year, which is awesome. But real quick, if there is probably like five people in my audience who've never heard of you or your channel because your channel is really taken off. Um, but real quick, can you tell us about your channel, what you guys are doing and where they can find out more about you? All right, so we are called the Holler Homestead. Um, we uh, we kind of got sick of the status quo and we sold everything, hit the road. We traveled around the country um, in search of a homestead and really, to the people who watched that, it was really about me and my wife reconnecting. And when we came through North Carolina, we fell in love. And so this is where we ended up settling. And we are building our homestead from the ground up. We got this property that was used and abused. And we are cleaning it. We are getting it to where it'll produce food for us. Uh, and we're just documenting it along the way. So you, you guys are doing husbandry, livestock mm -hmm. work, uh, metal work, obviously. When I, when I have time for it. I've seen you guys do like barbecuing, so there's some cooking and everything yeah. in there. So pretty much all the fun homesteading stuff you guys got going on. Yeah. Uh, any big plans for this year that you're uh, moving toward? Really, this year we keep talking about is infrastructure. This year is all about you know, getting our space for butchering built, um, getting water throughout the whole property, uh, electric, where it needs to be just stuff like that you know infrastructure right fences um you name it so if somebody's looking to develop a homestead from scratch or if they're already in the process and they just need some encouragement holler homestead is probably the place to go to get that or if you want to see what not to do <laughs> right learn from our mistakes there's always that right 